watching a fashion show. You wait in a crowded room full of fancy people. It's loud and full of light. Then the lights go off. Music starts. Models walk past you one after another. Then they walk again, all at the same time. Clap, clap, clap. It's already over. People stand up and go running to catch their next show. That leaves you alone on your seat wondering, was that good work? Was that new? How to judge it? It's something that requires practice indeed, so I'd like to share with you what I've learned with time in this video. Send the video. Let's go. What is not a critic? Nowadays there are a million bloggers or Instagrammers. They are tweeting and posting on their phones while sitting in the show, literally real time. When interviewed after the shows, those people would say, oh, I loved it. I loved the way he or she played with color. Such an avant-garde designer. I loved every piece. Those statements are all opinions. An opinion is not a critique. An opinion doesn't help people who haven't seen the show to understand what you saw and whether the designer did a good job. It doesn't help. What is a critique? A critique is an explanation of what you saw, but also how you understood it and why. A critique brings in a research perspective on the matter. It's analyzing a designer's collection in the context of who he is, where he's coming from, where his background and origin are, and what he's been doing until now. So it's really helping other people understand what they're seeing by giving a lot more background and information around it. Example, Alexander McQueen, his show of spring summer 2001 called Voss. I highly recommend you watch the entire show. It's on YouTube in full. I link it. If you see this picture without context, it's likely that you will wonder why. <laughs> What the hell? What was he thinking? Where's that coming from? So let's add a bit of context. McQueen was gay in a time and place in which it wasn't okay. It wasn't accepted. His father has reportedly beaten him for that. I think his difficult childhood made him want to express his vision and his message a lot stronger later. And that's why the message in each collection, in each show, comes across extremely strongly for McQueen. The topic of the birds is also linked to his childhood. From his child bedroom, he always said he could see birds flying around and spend hours looking at them. So here the wild birds were very aggressive and prisoners in a huge glass box in which the models were walking in squares during the entire show. Being a prisoner in his own body could be a feeling McQueen had until he felt more confident about his own sexuality. Then the woman is half human, half animal. McQueen saw women as being fascinating, but also intimidating. It's very clear here. I could talk about this picture for another hour, but I hope you will agree with me that the more information and background knowledge you have, the more interesting the look and the way it's presented. How to review a show. When attending a show, you will probably get an invitation card or at least a little note on your seat when you arrive by the designer, telling you the vision and the inspiration. Here, the words are carefully chosen, so they give you really important and useful hints on what you're about to see. Do read that text. Then, ideally, you already gathered beforehand knowledge about the designer, what he's done until now, what his aesthetics and taste look like, and format collections, so you're capable of judging if what you're about to see is new, innovative, repetitive, fits in the whole picture, or is completely new for that designer. Then the show starts. The presentation, the music, the lighting, the setting in the room, everything is helping you understand that one message. But remember that what you are judging is the collection. You're looking at the cloth. Don't let yourself be disturbed too much by the whole fuzz around the cloth. The first and the last look are the two most important ones in the show. The first one is the first impression. It's unfair, but people seriously sometimes just judge because of that. And then the last look is the one that people will remember once they've left the room, seen another 20 shows in the same fashion week, and go home to write their critique. So the first and the last look get extra care and attention. They give the essence of the collection in case you forget about the rest of the collection. While the models are walking, 
try to describe what you're seeing using emotions and adjectives. For instance, fear, irreverent, dark, raw, tribal, sporty, etc. It's best to do that in your mother tongue so you can be more precise in the wording and really it matters and write them down during the show. I like to do that. Then as the models come again all together at the end you get a chance to see overall the cohesiveness and the balance of the collection. Two very important things. The cohesive collection sends one message. All the clothes and all the outfits are going in one clear and understandable direction. The balance collection has the right proportions between long and short, between different types of silhouettes, fabrics, colors, etc. If you are a buyer, the finale is also the moment for you to decide to buy or not. Do you find enough pieces that fit into your assortment, that are original, that you want to stock, that are wearable and that you think hit a trend? The finale is really, really, really important in the collection. After the show, once the noise and the people are all gone, you go home, go online and look at all the outfits again in pictures next to each other. There are a ton of websites to do that. That is your time to think calmly without time stress about what this collection makes you think of. If you think it's new, unique, it has a strong message, it's something wearable and is it something you want to write about? And at the end, you write your review. You see that it's the result of a whole process, a whole journey. So you want your review to reflect exactly that. That's why you want to write not just what you see, but also how you got to that conclusion. And here you have to give a bit of the knowledge you gathered for other people to also be able to understand what you're talking about. Until now, I haven't mentioned one important point. If you can't physically attend the show, it doesn't mean that you can't write a critique about it. You can go online, on YouTube or other platforms. The shows will be uploaded in full, usually within a few hours after the show. Sometimes they even get streamed, so you don't even have to wait. You really get to see what the fashion editors are seeing. It wasn't the case before the internet. So we're really lucky to live in this century. And there are no more excuses to write poor critiques. In the info box right below, you will find a couple of articles for further reading, including an interview with the lady who spent multiple years writing fashion reviews for the New York Times. Highly recommended read. Thumbs up if you found this video useful. Thank you so much. Who is your favorite designer and why? Here's my video from last week about athleisure clothing and here is Berlin Alternative Fashion Week. Eight shows in one day. My head exploded on that day. So with this one, you can start practicing your fashion critiquing. I see you next Sunday for a new video and take care. Bye.